Hello everyone and welcome to this MFL SOS session on using film in the MFL classroom. My name is Zoe and I will be talking to you today with my colleague Elaine um, about lots of different ways you can use film in the MFL classroom um, and we know it's turning getting to the, that time of year when yeah um, it's sometimes it can be a little bit of a struggle this part of the term and you might be thinking about using a film um, but on the other hand we kind of want to go beyond just putting something on and you know sitting back and and just just something to occupy them we actually want to get some language or cultural knowledge out of it as well so we're going to give you lots and lots of really really practical tips that hopefully you can use straight away with your students um so yeah just while we're waiting for everybody um i'll let you know a little bit about we've done lots of previous webinars this is the last one for the year um we've done lots of them and this is the ones from the last uh yeah part of the last quarter of the year or so um they're all available on our youtube channel and also on the language Net website um, if you go to mfl webinars um in the menu you'll see all the webinars we've got so far so um really you can catch up with any of those and we are still planning our next season of webinars um one we've had one date you can put in your diary already is we've got esmeralda salgado again which we're really excited about she was fantastic in the last webinar that she did for us and she's going to be talking about stickability in the mfl classroom via grammar and verbs um which i can't wait for um we've just confirming other dates, but we will be doing webinars on behaviour management, which will be the third one in our three part series. And um, the second part was last night, if you were there with um, to see if, uh, if my colleague Fiona talk about that. Um, we're going to have specific ones of teaching Mandarin and also Arabic and possibly Italian as well. Um, as some of you may know, we've recently launched GCC Italian resources, which we're really happy about. Um, there's other ones that like independent learning, creativity in the language classroom, marking and feedback and so on. If you have any topics that we uh, that you'd think we should cover that we haven't yet done in a webinar, please do let us know. Just send, drop us an email um, or put in the chat um, and we will definitely consider adding it to the list because we want to do webinars and CPD that is useful for you. Um, OK, so today it's going to be um, me and my colleague Elaine talking to you. Um, so I'm a former teacher of MFL and EFL and an author and composer of languages and I'm also the head of content at Language Nuts and my colleague Elaine is um, also has a wealth of experience. We recently worked out that we have quite a few former teachers working at Language Nut now and we have over 70 years of teaching experience on the team and about half of that is Elaine. She has so <laughs> much experience and so much that she can share with you. Um, so we hope that uh, that you find our session today really useful. Um, and one thing just to be aware of today is that we will be sending out the PowerPoint presentation as well. Um, and we find it's really helpful if you use both the video and the webinar, at the, both the video and the PowerPoint at the same time, just in um, conjunction. Um, and everything that we say is just a suggestion. No, nothing is something you have to do um, and things that have worked for us. But your mileage may vary. Everything, everyone's different. And we also want to thank everybody for being really, really generous with the ideas because we have picked up lots and lots of ideas um, and materials from our colleagues over the years. And I'm sure you have too. So I'm going to pass over to um, Elaine to tell you a little about what we're going to be covering today. Thank you, Zoe. OK, so in tonight's session, we're going to have a quick look at the links to teacher standards if you are in England and Wales, because we regularly get teachers asking us for that if they are in their PGC year, their school direct teach first, or they are um, in their ECT year or their second year of teaching. We we'll just have a quick look at where film fits with national curriculum, the GCSE and any A-level links, uh, which films you might want to use, what you might want to use with regard to the films, when you might want to, to choose a film, um, you run in a film club, and then obviously the activities, and we've broken that down into the four key stages um, of for England and, and Wales, but also for primary, secondary and advanced if you are elsewhere in the world. And then we will also give some tips on uh, practical source, practical tips for sourcing films. OK, so if we look at the teacher standards very quickly, then um, mostly similar to what we've used in previous webinars, but we know that using films for teacher standard one can often be very stimulating for a lot of students because they touch every single skill that you can possibly uh, want to sort of deal with as well as culture and obviously outside interests that the students have. Um, it supports stretching and challenging the students, allows them to make good progress, and we can see how pupils learn and, and address any emerging needs with any issues 
issues that they've got. Um, it will allow us to have um, secure knowledge, particularly if you're a teacher of advanced level, uh, key stage five, where you have to teach a film or uh, a book um, for the specification. And obviously it helps us with our phonics, um, listening to native speakers speaking. Um, it gives our students a little bit of intellectual curiosity and allows us to make the curriculum more engaging. Um, and obviously um, we can adapt the teaching. Obviously all our students have to have a clear understanding of the needs um, of what of what we need to have that clear understanding of the needs rather for what they uh, what they need to learn. Some students learn better doing certain things and film might be one of their things that helps them to learn um, how assess how to assess them um, in terms of the read aloud. We can use a lot of the subtitles if you get a film with subtitles to be able to support phonics and how students read um, and obviously clear routines and uh, rules and routines for behavior. Then they need to be uh, probably a little bit more behaved uh, well behaved when you're showing a film because obviously it impacts on everyone if you're watching it as a class um, and obviously it will involve and motivate the students and obviously any appropriate professional development that you do this is this can be counted towards it and then if we look at how it links to the national curriculum the GCSE and A level at key stage two you're looking at a variety of authentic resources and appreciating stories at key stage three we're reading great literature obviously um, a film might be a book as well we're using authentic resources which go beyond the students immediate needs and we're looking at a material from a range of different sources and then at key stage four we're looking at a variety of contexts it does expand their cultural knowledge and it could be an abridged or an adapted authentic film and obviously looking at contemporary and cultural themes and for key stage five it's a requirement of the specification certainly for a level OK, so now move on to which films I've put here a selection of film posters, a selection of film stills from some of the types of films that you might want to use. And I'm going to pass back to my uh, colleague Zoe now to look at which films and choosing a suitable film for your class. Hey, thanks very much, Elaine. Um, yeah, so we've put um, we've made a little collection of lots and lots of ideas. These are lots of things that we have taught over the years or that our colleagues have told us that they've taught. Um, so what I'm, I'm not going to read them all out, um, but first of all, just thinking about when you're choosing a film, um, there are a few things to consider. Um, so yeah, I will shortly show you a list of the ones we've got for French, German and Spanish. Um, but whatever film you do, you make sure you watch it first. Um, I've sometimes had this where I vaguely, I've seen this before, you know, I'm sure it's fine. And then you watch it and then something comes up. Um, you can go by ratings and obviously you do need to make sure that you're not showing any films that are too high in age rating. Um, but on the other hand, uh, you can find that there are cultural norms that vary between different countries. Um, so something that is the equivalent of a PG in uh, Germany may be more like a 15 in UK. Um, so you do need to make sure that you're showing something that's appropriate. Um, and even this, yeah, so the amount of, for example, violence and nudity that is accepted and tolerated um, at lower ratings um, in particularly Spain and Germany uh, is quite different to the UK. So make sure you watch it. Um, if you're showing the subtitles, um, just keep an eye on how things are translated. Um, in particular, swearing can be translated quite differently. Um, so I particularly find this with with German films where um, a word that isn't actually that strong in in German and something that you know perhaps my um, my German grandmother-in-law would would use um, gets translated as something that's much stronger in English. Um, so just be aware of that and you need to make sure that the rating that you have is lower than the younger student you have in the class. Um, so I know it's difficult if you've got that one year seven who's not quite 12 yet, but you do need to make sure that um, everybody in the class uh, is is able to legally able to watch this film of course sometimes um you will find that there is a film that's really really good and it's mostly fine and there's just this one scene um which you know if there's uh, some nudity or something that's slightly dodgy in it um you can if, if you've got any kind of video editing software you can actually cut that um if you have a, a file or actually just cover it up if necessary um so i remember showing uh law la rent quite a few times with with uh, a film club and um it's generally okay for, for year 11 um, but uh, there's one scene with a, a snapshot of a, uh, a woman who's not very dressed uh, <laughs> so, um, if you've seen the film you know what I mean um, in a flashback scene and uh, what I used to do is I knew exactly when I was I know I had the exact time written down when it came up to it um, I would just uh, yeah like freeze the board um, and then 
wait 10 seconds and then unfreeze it again. And it, it became a bit of a running joke that, I was, oh dear, something seems to have happened to my board and I can't display the film. Um, oh, it's working again now. And everyone's say, like, miss, we know there was something dodgy. That's like, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's fine. So sometimes you, you can't you can't do that um, because it's a shame if you can't show the whole film just because of you know one tiny bit that isn't actually integral to the plot. Um, the same goes for sort of, yeah, any particular scenes you might get in, in the, for example, Spanish or French films. Um, think about the content of the film that you're showing and uh, when necessary, obviously even assuming that it's still within the rating, if there are any content warnings you might need to give um, and you know your students, you know that the kind of uh, background that they have, we I think we, we owe it as teachers to be trauma informed when we're um, talking about films and when we're showing things to our students, um, so any violence or death, abuse or anything, alcoholism, anything like that. Um, if you know, you, it, it, it's it's worth telling your students about and thinking about any particular students you might need to um, just speak to and just check that they're comfortable with that. Um, and any conversations you might have to have afterwards. When you're choosing a film, you might have different uh, purposes for that. So it might just be that you want to show a bit of culture. So I know lots of Spanish students, uh, Spanish teachers show um, Encanto or Coco. Um, they're not in Spanish, but they, there's a lot about Hispanic culture there. Um, so that could be a reason for it. Um, is it for language? Is it for language practice? Um, is it just for motivation? Sometimes it's just part of getting students on side so that you can do other things with them more. Um, appropriately. Um, so if it's if language isn't the issue, then you might want to show a dubbed version or if, if that's not really the, the point of it, then you might want to show um, a dubbed film. So it's actually it could be an, an English film, which is just dubbed into the target language. There is a place for that. Um, and from my experience, I found that if you do that, animated films are less jarring. So um, yeah, sometimes as a, as a motivational um, thing or sometimes to I'll be honest to, to keep uh, some students keep a difficult class sort of under wraps when I'm doing speaking assessments, for example. Um, I would sometimes show them a dubbed one um, of a film that they might know, but they'd see it in the target language. Um, and yeah, animated films are much less jarred, jarring um, than a live person whose lips are clearly not doing the same shapes as the voices that's, that's coming out of them. Um, and the final thing to consider is if you're going to show subtitles, um, which most of the time you probably will, are they going to be in the target language or are they going to be in English? And again, there are arguments for both. Um, if they are certainly key stage three, you're probably going to show them in English and also partly for some of key stage four as well. Um, if your students are going to be so unmotivated by not understanding what's going on in the film, you might want to put them in English. On the other hand, they do get quite a lot out of it um, linguistically if you show them in target language. So that's something to consider. Uh, I'm going to briefly show you um, a list of these films and then um, you can, when you watch this back, um, or we can also send this out, we can send the, the PowerPoint back, you'll have a list of them. And if anybody has any other ones to add in, please do put them in the chat because we always want to share ideas. And there are lots and lots of Facebook groups where um, teachers share lists of films and things that they've watched. Um, so here are some for, for French, so we've looked at some for younger students and some for older students. Um, lots of these we, used here are some Spanish films. Um, so Elaine and I are both uh, French and German teachers, so we don't have as many in our repertoire of Spanish films. Um, but uh, yeah, please do suggest any that you have too. And German films as well. So there's a few there. So yeah, I'll just skip through this so that you can then look back, back later on at the video. Um, so the next question, I'm going to move over to my colleague Elaine. Yeah, thank you, Zoe. Um, so what kind of things can you use for um, actually teaching? Well, you can use film posters and I've popped a couple of links uh, in the slide. I think it's the slide after this that shows you where you can actually get hold of some of those. Um, obviously, adverts um, about films and trailers you can find on YouTube. Um, you can get clips from a film. If you're lucky enough to have the film, you could just screenshot something or you could just um, record a section of it that you want to show. Um, there are lots of film reviews out there and there's one in the bottom corner there about um, Back to the Future. Um, short films are great. There was recently one that was on um, on YouTube. I was watching it last week with a couple of students that I know who 
learn German um, and it's on Nikolaus and again it's only four minutes long but they found it quite easy to understand and they enjoyed watching it because it, it gives them a lot of culture as well. So you might go for feature films, you might look at music, um, there's a lot more sing-along films along now like Frozen and Lion King where if you've got younger students or a, an enthusiastic class who wants to have a go at singing along with some of the songs in the target language you, you can do that as well. Um, obviously you can use the dialogue or you might use um, any film scores that you can get hold of. Um, when I was involved in writing some of the Spanish and uh, A-level materials earlier this year um, I managed to get hold of a lot of the film scores which does help when you're trying to work out what what's being said um, and be able to sort of look at some of the more tricky language. Um, you might have some films where you've got a storyteller so you might have narration there um, and a lot of the films that you can get hold of sometimes have interviews with the directors or the actors or you might be able to find that um, somewhere as men Joey mentioned on the Facebook groups there's an awful lot of, of things you can see. There's one Facebook group called Audio Clips in French, German and Spanish on Facebook and there you can find lots of interview um, sort of people have put links to interviews there with the actors and the directors. Um, often you'll find bonus material there or any scenes that have been deleted, uh, not because they're inappropriate but because they maybe just didn't fit with the length of the film. Um, and then obviously the film stills are easy um, to, to use. That They're great for using with GCSE as well for um, for the you know for being able to describe a photograph or anything like that and again there's lots of things on social media that you'll find um, about films on Twitter or on Instagram. Uh, on the next slide that's the slide I was mentioning there which has got some of the links on so again as Zoe said if you want us to send you this presentation we can do if you watch it later you'll be able to find uh, by following those links and find some material that's free to free to air. Um, and then the, the next slide is when to actually teach them. I'm not going to spend too long on the film club because I know Zoe, my colleague, is going to mention that. Whether you have a breakfast, lunch or an after school club, that might be possible. Um, as a project at the end of the summer term after you've done your options maybe for some classes that might be a possibility if you work in a school where you do options in year eight or year nine and maybe you collapse the timetable um, and you have a new timetable begins with the option groups in certainly in schools I've worked in we've done that after the uh, mocks after the um, not the mocks sorry the options have been done we've tried to sort of get a head start on ourselves particularly if it was year nine and we've looked at maybe a, a project with some classes that are not going to be doing um, their languages into GCSE or Key Stage 4 and as a result of that you might find you get more engagement and less disaffection from those students who are not carrying on. If that's not an option in your school you might still decide to do a project but you might do it um, and link it a little bit more to what you could have possibly be doing towards um, GCSE. End of term as again as I was saying is a good idea um, particularly now moving towards a read aloud. Um, you might find that with some of your students you're having to do the read aloud outside the classroom or at the front of the classroom or in your stock room or wherever you can do it and the rest of the class are either revising or they've done their read aloud so putting a film on for them to watch and, and do whatever appropriate activities for that might be a possibility. Um, I've always found when I've done a scheme of work if I'm doing a film I've always thought right work backwards what do I actually want to achieve at the end of this film section what, do, what are we going to get out of this and what are my linguistic outcomes it could be it's purely cultural um, as Zoe mentioned or it could be that you that you're wanting students to be able to uh, produce something of a project like a booklet or a poster or maybe a, a piece of of writing um, about the film using the past tense uh, so have have that in mind when you're actually doing it and obviously when you're doing advanced level key stage five um, at the moment I'm teaching a level myself so I've just done the the film we did it in the summer term of year 12 and we've just finished the book so I kind of found that that was the best time for me I did the, the film first um, we did a film and a book um, because I felt that was it just got them into that sort of a summary mood and and they felt it wasn't as it was less pressured than doing it in year 13. OK, so move over to you now, Zoe, to look at film clubs. Yeah, so lots of people um, find film clubs a really nice way of getting uh, yeah, film doing films with their students without using lesson time because obviously sometimes that could be an issue to get the amount of lesson time to do that. Um, and some of the, there are lots of questions to consider. There's no right way or wrong way to do a film club, um, but because it really depends on the situation. But one question is when are you going to do this 
this film club. So um, you can do it over lunchtime and basically you can usually get one uh, film over two lunch times and you put in a third lunch time in order to actually do sort of do something with it, discuss it and so on, um, which can be good because you tend to get numbers are up um, and more attendance for that and it doesn't take as much time. On the other hand, it does mean that it kind of really splits up that film and sometimes you can lose momentum or forget a little bit about what happened. On the other hand, um, you can do it after school, which of course does take up a lot more of your evening and so students have to be prepared to stay on for a fair bit of time, but it does mean you can usually watch a film in one and have a discussion afterwards. Um, so, for example, I used to do a Key Stage 4 uh, German film club and we used to do it once a month um, after school. And yeah, that that works quite well for students. So it really depends on on your students and, and your uh, time as well. Um, which year groups do you want to do? So um, I did a Key Stage 4 one um, and that means that you have a much wider group of uh, well, selection of films that you can choose from, of course, because you have older students and you can do a little bit more with them. On the other hand, lots of people very successfully do a Key Stage 3 language club um, and you tend to have your, you know, have your really enthusiastic students there and it really instills a love of learning and a love of languages and culture um, quite early on. So that can also be great as well. Um, obviously, the films that you do will really depend on the students that you that you aim your film club at. And also the languages. So with Kisish 4, you're almost certainly going to be just showing films in the language that you're teaching um, or perhaps on a rotation basis if you have a lot of dual linguists, if you're lucky enough to have those in your school. Um, but if Kisish 3, lots of colleagues actually do a sort of general MFL film club um, and they show films in different languages, not even necessarily just the languages that you teach in the school, um, just to really expose students to world cinema, which can be really, really useful. Um, and that also means that you can perhaps rotate around colleagues as well. So it's not just you always giving up your lunchtime or after school, whatever, to run a film club. So that's something to consider. And also it doesn't have to be a film. It can be TV series. Um, so actually that can be really nice. In a lunch break, you can possibly watch, you know, a half hour episode or something if you find something um, that's really suitable. So that's something to consider. Um, snacks, you know, uh, that can be a way to to get uh, students, you know, get get them in. They, they, you bring them in with snacks and they stay because of the film. Um, if it's lunchtime, obviously they can bring their lunch and that's really nice. And that actually is one way of providing a very nice, safe space for students to have their lunch um, in, a, in an inclusive, inclusive atmosphere, um, watch a film, feel secure. Um, yeah, lots of students would appreciate that anyway, even without any of the cultural or linguistic uh, advantages of that. Um, if it's after school, I used to get some cheap popcorn, which they quite liked, um, you know, again, once a month and some you know, Tesco's own brand popcorn wasn't uh, a huge problem. And actually, I used to make them uh, tea. I, I, I hadn't really planned it, but the first time of the first session we said, um, I said, right, I'm going to the staff room to make up tea, does anyone want one? And they actually loved it. They just, you know, these year 11s kind of go, oh, I'm having a cup of tea. I feel very, very grown up. So, um, yeah, that's something to consider. And then what activities are you going to do? So you can have a discussion. I would suggest if you do have that discussion in English, it means you're really allowing students to express themselves more and um, to, yeah, because you would look at comprehension and cultural understanding probably over linguistics at that point. Um, but obviously it's up to you how you can have structured target language discussions um, predictions can be really nice things. So, um, for example, when I taught uh, when we did Lola Rent, um, there are sort of different scenarios. She's uh, for those of you who don't know the film, um, she has got 20 minutes to, to get a large amount of money. Um, so I got them to predict, right, if you had to get a large amount of money or if someone had to get a large amount of money in a short period of time, what would you do? What do you think she's going to do? And then they, sh they play out the different scenarios. And, and once it's clear what she's going to do in each one, I would stop and say, right, um, this is what she's doing. Do you think it's going to work? What's going to happen? And so on. You can stop a film just before the end, before if there's a big twist, you know, what do you think is going to happen? Um, so that can work really nicely. Um, you can get them to write reviews afterwards, which could be in the target language or not. Um, and also what I used to do is at the end of the year, we'd watch a few films over the year and I would get them to sort of nominate films for various Oscars and they could choose the categories which they really liked. Um, one thing that's really important is to make sure that it's different from your lesson. So it, this shouldn't feel like it's extra work. It should feel enjoyable as well. Um, and a tip which I will talk a little bit more about later is that one place you can get free films from is an organisation, a charity called Into Film, um, which does, it supports film clubs um, and there's lots and lots of information there. Okay, so we're going to talk about activities. I'm going to pass over to Elaine to talk about Key Stage 2. Thank you. 
Um, a lot of these activities that we have looked at for all of the different sections are to do quite overlap actually. So for the primary one, can you just put the the, the um, script? That's it. Thank you, Zoe. I couldn't think of the English then. Um, so basically when I've taught primary and I've done it with secondary as well, I've kind of like taught, so I might teach Pirates of the Caribbean and Toy Story. So there you've got a, an adventure film and a cartoon or a, a, a child's film or something like that. And I would teach maybe nine of those so that we could have the words that so they knew what sort of um, films they were. I might even show a little clip of the film as well, because that's quite fun to do that even in English, if you can't get hold of the film in the target language. And we would just do, um, you know, I like uh, adventure films. I love uh, cartoons. I hate Westerns. So I've just put some examples here with the French um, in terms of how we might do our actions and our grins and our like, you know, it might be a big heart for the love or something. And then we would maybe do some simple opinions and then we would maybe play a game. Like I've put an example here. They would just play um, a, a game with counters and a dice and they would land on something. And if they had that word there, they would have to use their um, their words to be able to create a sentence or um, to give an opinion. Um, I would then uh, maybe get them to do a little survey around the class and I would have maybe a table with um, the films across the top and uh, they would write the names of the students in their class down the side as they interviewed them and they would go up to them and say hello, how are you, um, you know, um, do you like um, a Western and they would say yes I like it and they would tick it and then they maybe get all of that in at the end of it and then we would maybe do a little bit of a, a writing exercise saying um, Jemima likes uh, Pirates of the Caribbean because it's fun or something like that so I'd maybe get a whole sort of unit of work out of that um, in terms of doing that just to keep going over the vocabulary uh, and keep um, keep the interest there and maybe I might just show a clip a clip or two more of the films and get them to sort of tell me what is that write it on a whiteboard and it just it just gets that engagement for them to listen to the film uh, in with target language or with subtitles or whatever you move on to the next one Zoe please um, and this one is here maybe get the stills in order so I maybe uh, download some of the stills and maybe uh, print them out or I might just have them uh, on a on a PowerPoint or on, on a grid on the screen and they would have to put them into the right order. They quite enjoy doing that if they've seen a film or maybe one that they haven't seen. So it's kind of before they see it. What do you think is the right order for the film uh, for the film stills? Uh, then I might have once we'd watched it or even before we'd watched it, if you've got um, uh, maybe a mixed ability class, you maybe you're teaching two year groups together. You might have um, year three who are just putting the, 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 the simple sentences with the, the stills in an order and year four might be putting some sentences or some vocab and matching them up with the stills. You might have that on their desk. Um, one thing that I have done is got a big still and blown it up and I've or I've, I've done uh, maybe nine sections of a still printed each one out and they've put them on the, the desk and they've had to sort of make it like as a little jigsaw that just is really good for pair work just to get them working together if you've got a class that um, are not used to working in pairs or it's something that you think you might want to try with them just a little bit different um, or I might as I've done there with the Elia de Jutisieux I might cover up a section of a of an actual um, photograph or a, a poster or even from the still and say right what's under there just gets them discussing what might be under there what could it be maybe put some vocabulary around around that as well um, might get them to draw a picture about uh, the film once they've seen it and you can drop that into something called photo speak um, which uh, if they draw characters on it it animates the pictures and the, the pictures actually speak which is quite fun um, and then you could upload a song from the film uh, and they can do the karaoke in the target language and you can drop that into something called smool um, which my daughter's uh, boyfriend uh, often uses with with songs to entertain his younger siblings and you can actually sing along with that um, which is great for primary. Okay pass back over to you Zoe to look at the key stage three four. Thanks very much so yeah we're going to be doing an absolute whirlwind whistle stop tour of various activities that you can do again don't forget you can always watch this back afterwards um, if we're going too fast but we've got lots we want to put in um so lots of primary ones there but some of the some of those which can also be used at key stage three as well um but other things that can work at key stage three and four and um, before you watch the film you can do predictions from the film poster or a trailer um so you could show them yeah for example the the film poster from Nicole Houston and try and work out what kind of film is it um look at the 
different characters what do you think they're like from from the way that they they look the expressions that they have and so on um trailers you can get a lot from that because of the music and so on so um if they've already learned different film types for example they can they can speculate on that um, another thing you can do um, to practice the phonics is, uh, again, before they've seen the film, um, you could display some of the characters, the names of the characters on um, on the board beforehand, and they have to work out how to pronounce it. So if you have Pierre Morange, um, if they've learnt the different, you know, the A-N as an R sound and, and so on, they can work out how they think they pronounce it. And then when they listen to it, when they watch the film and they hear the names being said, then they can see if they're correct or not. There are lots of things that might be quite specific to um, a film. So, for example, uh, I know lots of teachers that use Encanto um, do family trees, which is ideal because um, it's you know it's a way of practicing that. I know that often we tend to shy away from using students' actual family trees for very good reason. Um, so, fictional ones you can use a film, which is great, and that happens to be a very big family with lots and lots of different um, sort of family members in it. So that's great. Um, you can do gapped transcripts. So um, if you get the uh, the screenplay, and the script, um, you can and uh, Elaine talked to that that before. You can actually you know turn that into a, into a gap fill. They listen and they fill them out, or you can have a summary and do a sort of gap fill activity. Um, another thing you can do with the summary is have tangled translations. This can be um, a pair work, or it's actually works really well with a mixed ability class. So if you have a summary which is written in kind of you know franglais or denglish or whatever, so you've got you know. It's, chunks and words in each language sort of all mixed up together um, and then some students can translate the whole thing into the target language um, so they have to translate the English bits into the target language and some students can translate it into English so um, that's there's some sort of um, adaptive learning and teaching right there. Um, you could do vocab or phrase bingo, so you could give them particular um, phrases or words that they think might that you think might come up in the film. They could also predict those, or you could provide them, and they can tick them off when they hear them. So it means that they are listening with a sort of real focus. Um, and another thing that you can do with lots of these kind of activities, and here I've put mostly the sort of receptive ones together, um, is you you can do it bit by bit. Um, as you watch each section of the film, because you're probably going to take at least a couple of lessons to watch the film. Um, but also something I found really useful is particularly if you have um, a class where you're struggling with behaviour management in that class, is to put all the things you want to do together into one big booklet or a pack, um, which they can then kind of work through over the course of a few lessons um, in their own time um, or at their own pace. And I that's, that's something that I use very successfully. And I said, look, after by this date, the whole thing has to be done. Um, so it's up to you how well you pace yourself during the lessons. If not, you've got loads of extra homework to do and you know you won't have me there to support you. And that worked really, really nicely because I wasn't always trying to um, get everyone to be quiet and listen to me, which can be really difficult, particularly for early careers teachers. Um, so that's something that you can do. Moving on to sort of more um, productive tasks that you can do with Kisses 3 and Kisses 4. Obviously, describing characters is a really good one um, using their physical attributes or their personality. So you can use this for introducing vocabulary, um, but also, yeah, get them to write descriptions or draw them and, and, and describe them. Um, film stills make great photo cards if you want to practice photo descriptions, if you use an exam board that has that. Um, so, for example, this is an, um, a photo from La Sension, The Climb, um, which is a great film. So, you know, there's there's lots that you can say there, even if they haven't, you, you can do this even before the film as well. You can say, you know, il y a deux hommes, um, un homme d'art et l'autre semble avoir froid ou avoir peur. You know, there's lots of things you can say about them. Um, you can act out the scenes, uh, particularly if you've got the screenplay again, um, you can actually use the script and, and that's great for your students that have a bit of a dramatic flair. Um, but also, you know, you can you can get them, you can note down particular scenes from their subtitles if you have them as well. We'll get them to try and recreate them um, if you know using the using a few sort of notes of what's happened um, or they can do mimes or freeze frames lots of things that you can do that's quite nice quick cross curricular things with with drama um, they can write a film review um, that's a, a really useful thing and that's something you often get them to do anyway as part of you know um, when you're teaching them about film vocabulary but it's it just makes it much more motivating if it's actually a film that they've seen. Um, you can also get them to write a summary if you're sort of starting to think about transition up to Key Stage 5. Um, and lots of films have songs in them um, if they're musical films, and that can be really, really powerful. So um, a very short story that I have for you is um, I had a really difficult in my NQT year as it was then, ECT year, year one, um, I had a really difficult uh, year, bottom set year 
nine French class. Um, it was after options, they made it very clear that they didn't want to do French. <laughs> um, and yeah, I had this really struggle with behaviour management and we did a, a project on Les Choristes and I didn't think it's going to work. I thought they were all going to think it was really sad and um, they loved it as it happened. Um, there was a group of girls who became obsessed with Pierre Morange and said he was he was bay as the slang was at the time. Um, I thought it was great and yeah, they all really liked it. And they worked really well on this film booklet that worked that worked great for them over a few lessons and because they had worked so well and actually been really engaged I said if you want I'm quite musical I'm happy to teach you one of the songs from it if you want to again didn't really think they'd go for it but they did and I taught them Voix de Chemin which is um, sort of one of the main songs from that um, and it works as a, as a tip if you teach this if you do teach this film it more or less works as a round um, so if you do Voix de ton chemin, gamins oublié, garé, and then start again there, Voix de ton chemin, it works pretty well and it's really simple. Um, and we did a little bit, so they, they learned how to pronounce it really well, they learned what the words meant, and it just, yeah, it was fantastic. So by the end, it was sort of uh, truth being, <laughs> yeah, following fiction really, because I had this this whole class that really came around, um, sang this song in basically harmony, um, and for the rest of the year we had an understanding, and it was it was really good. So yeah, that was that was quite a beautiful moment for me. Um, if you teach Spanish and you do Encanto dos Orejitas, is a great song, and I know there's lots and lots of uh, worksheets and things out there that the teachers have uh, produced on that because um, it's got some great vocabulary. Um, and I realize I've got photo description using film stills twice, so yeah, you can do that again. And uh, last thing that you can do is you can write a, um, a, a tweet or a text or an email talking about a film, um, and then you can use some of the work to create a quiz, and the classmates can see if they can guess the name of the film. Um, so that's that's a really great task as well. Um, passing back to Elaine, who's just going to yeah. talk about some speaking questions, and then key stage five. Yeah, that's great. Um, one of the things that I do um, with my students, particularly when they start year 12 um, or their first year of advance, is we look at a film that they've maybe done and that won't necessarily be a film that they will be um, using in their advanced course, but it's just just gives them that sort of um, transition thing. It, it, they've seen a film of any kind and we can talk about it um, and it just breaks the ice with the students to give them that sort of nice lead into uh, their advanced studies, uh, studying level studies. Um, also, I've used these in GCSE speaking tests for them. If they've we've watched a film, we've maybe talked a little bit about the film and they can use those in their speaking exam. OK, moving on to the advanced section then, which is our last section on activities, Zoe. Um, obviously, um, talking about films, I sometimes start off with some very random pictures um what might just support them with helping them to uh to just get into that sort of frame of mind that they're going to be learning a, a film or watching a film and learning about it and then having to eventually write an essay on it or a report or whatever your uh, specification demands um and sometimes i use these as wall displays as well so moving on to the next slide zoe um Wall display I always find is really important when you're doing a film because it, it just gives them that, it gets them into that sort of idea that yes, this is what we're going to be doing. And I sometimes put uh, random pictures up there on the wall display about what we're going to be doing, um, the film we're going to be doing. I might not even use any of the stills or any of any clues at all about the film um, that, I, that I teach. I try and teach different films, um, sort of every, every cohort of child, because I get bored with it as well. And it, you tend to find that if you, if you get a little bit stuck in your ways, well, for me, certainly, I've always found that challenge for me to do something a little bit different has been as, as just giving us that fresh approach. Um, so previewing the film, um, I've always looked at maybe thinking about some activities that would um, maybe get a selection of items together that they could um, look at and try and guess which type of film it is, what, what the film's about. Um, I remember when I taught Die Weisse Rose, um, the white rose in German, um, the last time I did that, I gave all my students a white rose and I asked them to wear it for a few days in school and to uh, actually find out what it was like carrying this thing around and then we came back and we talked about it in English and in German as to how they felt carrying this thing, what people ask them what how people looked at them uh, it was just very an interesting um sort of preview into the film sort of to, to 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 try and get into the um into the under the skin of what was coming um 
obviously you might look at um, the director or anybody who's been involved in the film like actors and actresses you might look at the life of them and have a little bit of a, of a dive and a bit of research into that um, you might look at the historical context of the film the social aspects of the film before you actually watch it um, you might research one aspect so if you've got some students in there who might not be able to perform as well as some of your other students I might say I want you to give me a sentence I want you to write me a couple of sentences I want you to write me a short paragraph or give them an amount of words that you want them to do or you might get one student to, to maybe write a slide for you and then put it together um, and say right this is the film we're watching I want you to just do me a little bit of research about the director about one of the actors and that way everybody feels that they're part of the of the um, overall research and then as a class they can present it even if you only get some students who are presenting a couple of sentences they feel that they've got something to offer um, as Zoe's mentioned, using the stills to predict the storyline is a good thing. So being able to pull out some of the stills, maybe some of the less um, obvious stills, just trying to zone in, maybe take a little snapshot of something, a part of the of, of a screenshot and try and work out what wh where that comes in, in the storyline. Or you might have maybe half a dozen of stills and say, right, which order do you think these come in? And that sort of gets them to think about the story that they're going to be doing and the film they're going to be watching. Um, Preparing the vocabulary ahead of watching the film is 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 something that I know a lot of people try and do and they put lots of vocabulary out there. There's lots of stuff you can find online, um, but there's an awful lot of vocab that students have to pick up to watch a film in a foreign language. So it's, you need to be really careful about, uh, from what I, my experience of it, of what vocabulary you're presenting. So I tend to look at the, the vocabulary that is key to the film. What are the key themes? What vocab might they need for that? Um, any generic vocabulary that they might need for just saying I think that or in my opinion or many people think that um, and obviously when you're thinking about vocabulary don't chuck every the baby out with the bathwater because you're only teaching students who you taught at GCSE or have done GCSE if they're new to your class or your school so it's only the same type of delivering vocabulary that you've done in the past. So if you've done it through, um, you know, repetition or you've done it through audio or you've done it through flashcards or anything like that, that still does apply for Key Stage 5 students. They haven't changed. They've just grown up a little bit. Um, so don't don't forget that, because that's one of the things I always find people tell me. How do you teach vocabulary at A-level? Well, I still teach it in a very same same way as I did at Key Stage 4 and 3. Um, when you introduce in the film, I've always found that watching the film in one go for enjoyment has always been the best thing so that they know what the film is about and they can then just get a grow uh, an overall um, a handle on what's going on. Some teachers I know don't like to do that. They like to watch it in sections. And I think it's very much depending upon what you think is right for your students and your your own um, teaching methodology. Um, and, and again, it's this with or without subtitles. I've always made sure that I've managed to get sometimes at a great trouble to myself and I've had to call in favours from people who've gone abroad or I've gone over myself and I've, I've thought about the next few years what might I need to teach, looked at the specification and bought loads of them and brought them back with me. So, uh, you know, do you do it with or without subtitles? I've always found that doing it with subtitles just helps to them to focus on the visual and thematic concepts and aspects of the film and it can be, if it's without subtitles it can be quite fast paced and they can become quickly become demotivated so i've always gone for the subtitles and subtitles are great as well for reviewing the film and being able to look at translation being able to look at listening and, and reading so there's lots of positive aspects to, to doing that with subtitles. OK, the next slide, Zoe, talks about what we have at Language Note. At Language Note, we, we have our A-level content um, for advanced, if those of you who have never come across that before. And at the moment, we have French and Spanish. We have seven films and books for each. And the beauty of Language Note is that you can customise your content as well. So if you feel that you have students who need more, more focus on some key aspects of vocabulary, you can put those into the, into the actual um, vocab trainer as well. But you can see we've got sections, for example, on the directive method, on giving a personal viewpoint, 
and um, we've also got vocabulary that looks around um, things like elements of the film, the genre, the linking phrases and paragraph leaders that you might need to use that, as well as looking at individual scenes within the film. So each film is broken down separately um, and then you can you can hone in on the key key aspects of that film. You can also then in the example there in the middle, everything that we do now on uh, language note, you can put into a printable so you can play um, just have it as a vocab list or you can have it as um, a one pen one die. Um, but it's certainly if you've not seen it and you feel that you'd like to have a, a free trial of it, please do get in touch. Move on to the next slide, Zoe. I think I've got a couple more slides on, on advanced. So obviously trying to link to your themes and your cultures. Don't study the film in isolation, particularly at key stage four. I mean, if you're doing things like Goodbye Lenin in German, that will uh, that lends itself to Berlin and the cultural Vida for Einigung, for La Hens, like immigration, um, maybe La Trece Rosas, apologies for my pronunciation of Spanish there, but that might be something to do with the monarchy. Um, I've always tried with my classes to rehearse the ideas in English first and then put it into the target language because they find it easier then to be able to talk about what they want. So it's interesting to watch a film as well without the sound, just looking at the stills because that really does focus on the visual techniques when you're looking at the techniques um, in terms of having to write an essay or, or dig deep on what's going on in terms of the visual, um, you know, the panning or the wide shots and things like that. Films cover all skills, listening, reading in particular. So the same kind of activities that you've used at GCSE and lower down the school will apply still for your um, A-level students watching a film. So as mentioned, freeze framing, you can discuss about a freeze a frame in particular that you think is important. If you're looking at the techniques in the film, you can look at the shot and the close ups and things there. Um, students might become experts on a section. So if you know there's going to be um, a particular area in the film that you want to study in depth over the, the, the few weeks that you're doing it, um, you might that might support the weaker ones to become an expert on a particular section or a particular character in the film. And you can obviously adapt um, how you teach the film for different levels in your class. So you might have some students answer comprehension questions. You might have matching tasks of, 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 of different sentence starters and ends. You could do a gap fill or a true or false. Um, you might have the film score as the, or the script as we've talked about to support some of the less able students that are doing A-level. Um, you, you're going to probably look at it scene by scene with some students, if not with most of your students. Um, one thing I've often done is I've given uh, my pupils at the handout and I've put the timings on the left hand side as to when they could expect to see a certain um, scene or a certain idea and that's helped with them uh, in, if they need that amount of uh, level of support um, and then you might even think right what comes before the first scene in the film what might be C in the opening credits before you start watching the film or you watch a, a particular scene you may be watching three minutes of the film and you give the students a list of words that might be heard and they have to tick those and then my last section Zoe is more linked to oh sorry I'd forgotten about this one sorry matching tasks I think I'd met I'd, I'd talked about this is your gap fill you rearranging sections of your dialogue if you've got um, a, a particular long dialogue that's going on Collect, correcting false statements um, putting the film in the correct order we've looked at that earlier about putting your stills in the correct order who could have said what? Maybe you could have said, right, this is something that um, hasn't been said in the film, but who do you think could have said it? If if uh, you can give some idea about that. Imagine what the characters are thinking, if there's any sort of times in the film where the characters are just sitting there um, and not saying a great deal. What are they actually thinking? Um, as though we mentioned, you can act out a scene as a role play. If you've got some budding dramatists in there or any students that are doing drama as part of an A-level course, you could even try rewriting the ending. Um, you could imagine what some of the deleted scenes might be. Um, if there aren't any to look at, you could even think about what what's, all the scenes could have been included in this film but haven't been. Um, you could have an imaginary interview with the director or one of the characters after the film or during the film about how they felt about it and obviously translating any online reviews um, that you find. And then the last thing, um, 
I've I've been involved in uh, examining for the boards with uh, examining films and books, and so where to start with essays is a big thing. It's always keeping it very much about your factual things, about the plot and analysing it. It's so important that your students can see the map schemes and the exemplar essays that are provided. There's lots of uh, study guides out there that you can buy and a lot of them have got exemplar essays in them and it will give a critique on them and the marks that could have been uh, awarded or would have been awarded. There's lots of stuff on the individual exam boards as well, looking at what ex an exemplar essay that a student has been has been written by a student and actually how that's been marked. Trying to coach your students to be the examiner and become very familiar with the mark scheme is also important. You might find that a student writes an essay and does it really well, so you share that essay around so that the students have got a fantastic example of that, or you might even write one yourself and do that. But certainly analysis and evaluation are key when you are looking at films for A-level in terms of the, of the evaluation, um, in terms of you know them being able to perform well and get a good grade. Some um, some colleagues uh, I've done worked with before have given their students a timed essay in a lesson um, and that's fine to do. I found that the best thing to do once you've got your students writing essays is planning, planning versus writing the full essay because they can use the same repertoire of starters and endings in the essays. It's about what they're going to put in that essay that's so important. And even though you've got the, the exam board's um, recommended mark schemes, always be aware that all valid points are rewarded. Anything that is not on those mark schemes could still be valid if they've got evidence to back it up. Um, so that's what I always tell my students. You know, if it's if you've watched the film and you know that you can put that in there and you can argue that, then stick it in there because I'm sure it will be uh, given um, appropriate marks. And I'll hand over to you, Zoe, for the final slide. Thanks very much. Um, so just before I do this, this final slide, um, if you have any questions of anything that's come up, then please do write them in the chat and we'll answer them at the end. Um, or otherwise, if anything comes to you later, we can always answer those by email. Um, so finally, you, if you've got it, you've got a, a film that you want to uh, use and you have you've got your ideas, you know what you want to do with it. But where do you get the film from? I think this is probably one of the number one questions I see from teachers on Facebook in various groups asking, where can I get this from? Um, so I mentioned before Into Film is a really nice uh, charity which is free for all state schools. Um, if you register, um, I've, been, I've not used it myself because I, I, I came across them too late um, after I'd just finished teaching, um, but apparently they do send out DVDs and resources and so on. Um, so that's really, really useful. Um, I would recommend where possible having an actual copy of the film. So whether that's by DVD or a, a sort of, you know, MP4 or digital file of it and to not rely on um, streaming sites, so Netflix or whatever, because again, um, they're always taking things down and I see lots of teachers suddenly panicking because they've got a whole scheme of work planned around this film and it's not on Netflix anymore. I believe, for example, The African Doctor has just been taken down from Netflix and there's yeah, lots of people panicking. So um, if you can get hold of the DVD, so as Elaine mentioned, go and get, you know, actually getting it abroad if you can. Um, eBay is a really great place for it. Um, lots of or social media teachers often will share it. Um, or you can get the downloads, which are downloads you can keep. So for example, on YouTube, you can often buy um, a film and have it and then it's it's yours. Um, so you can keep that. Um, and obviously I would not, um, I cannot recommend anything that is illegal, but if you did choose to find some something on a streamed version online, um, uh, be aware that those sites can obviously have um, inappropriate adverts and so on, and also can be um, yeah perhaps blocked and and can also yeah be a bit volatile. Um, so it is preferable to have a downloaded version whatever means you choose to do on that one. Like as I said, I can't recommend. Um, but yeah, do not stream. Um, certainly in school from anything uh, that's pirated. Um, and there are various websites, there are various groups on Facebook, say MFL Clips is one of them. I think Elaine mentioned another one earlier um, where teachers uh, do share um, copies that they have, um, clips that they have that can be really, really useful as well. Um, something that can happen is that you can get hold of a DVD or an MP4 or whatever of a film, but you don't have the subtitles. Um, if you're lucky enough to have them hard coded in, that's great. But um, yeah, um, but there is a way that you can get subtitles um, 
like online, um, which is yeah, again, it's perfectly legal. So if you get they are SRT files and these are special text files um, that can be played. And if you use um, VLC is is a really useful and it's a free video player that you can use for playing films. Um, it's open source. So if you Google the name of the film, so Le Coriste or whatever, and then file type colon SRT, um, you will hopefully find a place where you can download the subtitles for it in, in various different languages. Um, and then uh, you can see on here, if you in, in VLC, there's a bit of the menu that says subtitle, you can add the subtitle file and load it up. Sometimes there is a little bit that you might have to do try it before you actually share it with, this, with the students because it can be one where it's, um, yeah, uh, it, there might be some slightly out of sync or something, which is obviously really frustrating. Um, but so you might have to try a couple of places. Um, but that's a that can that can work really really nicely, and it means that you actually then do have the subtitles. Um, and often means you have the choice of either showing English subtitles or target language subtitles as well. And Elaine's also put a link to a place called filmdo.com, which also has um, yeah films on as well. So um, yeah. That's the end of what we have. We've just got a couple minutes left. Um, I can see there's a question from Sarah asking what are the rules for showing films and programs on Netflix to classes? Um, so I I have to say, I don't off the top of my head know what the, the law is. Um, I know that sometimes that lots of um, licenses are technically just for um, sort of home showing or sort of personal showing. I believe there's generally a bit of an allowance in schools with some things for educational purposes and, and, and so on. Um, you know, you, this is not something you're making any money out of. Um, it's often actually more schools that have, uh, yeah, policies about whether, I know lots of schools don't allow their teachers to access Netflix or Amazon Prime, uh, Amazon Video um, in their class. So yeah, it, it really, really depends. So it's an aspect of you might need to bring up with the school. Um, yeah, if anyone has, uh, that's all the questions that I can see. If anyone thinks of anything in the next minute or so, um, please do. But otherwise, if at the end of this uh, session, you suddenly, you know, two seconds after clicking leave, think of a burning question, please do email. Um, so you can email uh, Elaine at languagenut.com or me, Zoe at languagenut.com. Uh, if you're interested in a free 30 day trial of Language Nut, um, so then please contact um, our colleague Daniel um, and he will get you set up with that and we will also send this out as I mentioned to everybody uh, who is registered we will send out this, this video and you can also access the powerpoint as well and that will be on our language on the language that website if you have if you enjoyed today please do give us your feedback um, it's really helpful for us to, to hear you know what was good what wasn't and um, if you think any of your colleagues would find it useful then please do share with them on social media or to pass things on to them um, yeah and thank you so much for joining us for this webinar and any of the other webinars you've done this year in 2022 there's been lots of them you can find them all on the language Net website if they're useful um, I hope that you will have a fantastic End and hopefully peaceful end of term. Hope it goes well um, and a really good Christmas and uh, a well-deserved break. So thank you all very, very much. Yep, thank you.